Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at RIA taking a look at a very cool experimental tool room Smith & Wesson revolver. This is a, a Model 3 revolver, and it is Smith & Wesson's kind of classic, original, large, top-break revolver. And one of the things about firearms development, and really about all industrial development, all mechanical design and development, is that it's often a series of trial and error. You come up with an idea, it might work, it might not. The only way to find out is to actually try it and see what happens. And this is a gun that is based very specifically on a patent that uh, Daniel Wesson took out in 1873 for a different way of opening up the cylinder. Let me show you. Just as a quick refresher, uh, I have a regular number 3 Russian model here. And the way this opens, we have a little catch there to lock it, you unlock it, and as you pivot the barrel down around this hinge point, the extractor is pushed up. When it reaches full travel, it's released, and a spring snaps the extractor back down. So um, there is a way to open this without the extractor uh, moving. You can take your latch here, hold it backwards, and that allows you to keep the extractor down. But this is the issue, or this is the, the design that Wesson was attempting to improve when he designed, when he patented this guy. Now this has a different style of catch. It is a spring-loaded latch right there. And in the patent, Wesson specifically says that the exact mechanism of locking the frame together doesn't matter, because there are lots of things that are possible. And this, I think, was just a simple thing uh, to use for this experimental revolver. But once you unlock it, you actually pivot the barrel off to the side. There is a... the frame is cut right there, and there's a pin that allows it to pivot like that. Then, and only then, it falls back in, then you can open it up like this, like a traditional regular number three, and there's no spring in here anymore. So the extractor stays open uh, even when this thing's all the way opened up. So this would extract your cases, and then you have to bring it down to here. That closes the extractor, and then you can load the cartridges one at a time with the cylinder uh, swiveled out to the side. Once it's loaded, then you can lock it back in place. Now, what Wesson was attempting to do, and it's really cool, his patent explains his justification for these things, is he wanted to, first off, um, make it easier to load the gun without having to deal with a manual extractor uh, like override button. So uh, he didn't want people to go through the process of like, oh, I just want to reload this, I'll open it up, and oh, I got this far and like half the cartridges fell out because the extractor is lifting them out already. That was perceived as a problem, or rather a potential problem. Like maybe I can improve on this. That's, that's how things improve, is taking chances and experimenting. Uh, the other couple of issues that he points out are uh, this allows this design uh, allows a simplification of the manufacture and a reduction of cost. You have fewer moving parts because you don't have a spring assembly in here. You can make these ratchet teeth basically one solid part that doesn't move. On the standard guns, this bit has to rotate uh, to release the extractor once it's. Uh, reached full travel. So you can simplify that. And this also potentially solves an issue of what if the extractor gets stuck? What if the spring-loaded assembly in here that's supposed to snap the extractor back down doesn't work? There's no good way to try to force it back in. Well, with this system, the you have basically direct control over that extractor. It's the, the gear teeth here force it open when you tilt the barrel down, and they equally force it closed when you tilt the barrel up. So you're not going to have any issues with the extractor getting stuck, or you're going to have far fewer issues with the extractor getting stuck. And then, once again, you load it from this position. Now, sorry to give away the spoilers, but this didn't turn out to really actually be an improvement to the gun, which ought to be obvious because this is a tool room prototype and you don't see this system in actual production. And I suspect that is because, really, this is kind of... I don't know, I, I would not choose this system myself. I think 
people probably wouldn't like the limited, the restricted access it gives to the cylinder. Being able to break the cylinder completely open um, and have much easier access to, say, load two cartridges at a time, uh, or the ability to use something like a speed loader, which wasn't a thing at the time, but it would be uh, before all that much longer. That's a real advantage. And I think the perceived disadvantage that this thing is solving isn't really all that substantial. Uh, most of the time, if you're unloading the gun, you do want it to just throw out all the cases in one easy, quick motion without having to pivot first and then open. Um, there are some other issues to this. Like, once, once you uh, open it up like this, you can straighten the whole revolver out, so it'll tilt but it'll also be straight. You cannot close the gun simply by doing this, because the extractor hits on the breech face. You have to have it pivoted over in order to fully close the extractor and then latch it. So it has to be over, up, down, over. Where on the regular gun, it's just open, closed. Guns like this are extremely cool for people who are serious collectors of well, any particular brand or type or pattern of firearm. Because this is the sort of thing that gives you some insight into exactly what the designers were thinking about, what the inventors were thinking about when they were trying to improve the guns. And being able to find tool room prototypes like this is always really the high point of uh, any particular collection. So this is a really neat one to see. It's also really cool, of course, that it is so specifically connected to a specific patent. The patent explains exactly why the conversion was done, why the, the different mechanism was tried. Uh, and, and so we can understand, like, oh, that's, that's what he was doing, that's why it didn't work, and that's why other systems were adopted in its place. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.